We're here in Houston at the Laurel School of Massage waiting outside. Do you really want to hear about some gangsta shit? Do you really want to hear about some gangsta shit? <laughs> this, is, this is why people don't understand marketing in 2017. <laughs> it's like, what is that? <laughs> Hilarious. Thank you for coming. Oh, you're welcome. So how have you been? Uh, busy. <laughs> have you? Yeah. No Good to see you. I was stuck in traffic oh, driving from... Bananas. Probably as I'm going on the road. <laughs> <laughs> the, the schools, because I don't teach in core, um, the schools that I've gone to, I'll notice there's like 80% or like 25 or younger. And then you'll have like a handful of people who are like mid-30s and up, second career. And I almost, in some ways, like I'm excited about different groups in different ways. Because these guys are so young, they have potential. But these guys already know how to do the business part. More and more, I think, uh, social media in particular, YouTube, stuff we talk about, knives, I think it decentralizes power, and many people are very subtly threatened by it. The fact that you can take out a phone and make a video just as easily as I can with this wireless mic that you're filming, it makes people uncomfortable. It decentralizes power in a way. And, and I tease you about the social media because I'm constantly putting out your phone. Like, Who's uh, this guy? Really, really no, I love social media, so I'm totally going to be stalking you now. Yeah. But the thing is, too, it's like the capacity it has. And uh, as I was educating students about body work, I realized they needed help with marketing because they were like, I don't understand what you're doing. Like, this isn't massage. Mm -hmm. And it was like they had a marketing challenge. So as I started to answer their questions, they were like, you're making me very uncomfortable. And I'm like, why? you keep taking out your phone and recording everything and I'm like this is me isn't it I'm like I need to take this picture because we need to put this in our Facebook group like, oh yeah I know I yeah. love it and that's why I, I totally tease I tease students because the thing is I give away lots of free content to draw people into my story yeah. and allow them to get information wherever it fits them so that's, that's cool. just what I tease I love it it decentralizes information flow because it's no longer Hollywood it's like you know, a couple Yahoos and Honda Accord driving to Houston. So I, I think people are just intimidated by social media. They're, they're used to a certain um, established base of control that's slowly withering away. And it makes people anxious, sometimes in ways that I think they don't even understand. Uh, on my end, it's like, why would I hoard information? Why would I stop making workbooks or videos? Because when I make that content and information, it allows people to draw into my story and realize that I'm real, that I'm trying to help people, that I'm trying to provide content and information as cheaply and effectively as possible to help a greater number of people. When I got into my industry, that's all I wanted to do was help people. And then you realize at a certain point, wait a second, like not only can I help clients when I work on them, but I can produce content and information for massage therapists so they can help people. And then it expands everything that I wanted to do to begin with. Thanks to Instagram. <laughs>
Cool. And then from there, I bought the boards, and then I started following you on Snapchat, and whenever you do the Facebook Live videos, and yeah. I saw the one about, you know, using social media to market yourself instead of spending money on business cards and yeah. flyers, and, you know, like, use the whole digital page. It's free. Thing. It's free. Everybody, like, I, I got my phone plugged in in the other room, but, like, I have Knives come out who's filming for this and like he's helping me edit some of the material and content so we can float it through all those platforms and people get completely uncomfortable. If I'm in class and I take out my phone like I'm teaching and I start recording the students all like you know clam up and I'm like what's the problem and they're like well you know I don't want people to see me and I'm like how are you going to market your business? Massage therapist would tell me flat out it's a horrible platform. Absolutely horrible. The only thing people do on Snapchat is take pictures of their titties and send it to people or, you know, whatever. And I think that's a very short-sighted uh, way of looking at it. It's kind of like saying the Internet's only for porn or something. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, it's out there, but it's like it just depends on how you use the technology. No, it's just, I just approach it differently and continually what I do is just document the process of what goes on in my practice and then try to help massage therapists apply it to their situation whatever that is no, no. Uh, what did happen was I did a demonstration in Dallas maybe a year ago and uh, uh, Peyton uh, followed me I think it's Peyton Holland I think is his last name uh, Peyton followed me because we interacted in that class he followed me on snapchat he continued to kind of communicate with me over the course of the year, and then the next thing I know, he's sitting on a couch with his friend, and he's like, hey man, I was telling my friend about you, and like, we decided to Snapchat you, and he's gonna come get a session with you. So I got a client from that, but then both of them, I think, are coming to my class in July. Ding, 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 Snapchat! <laughs> A lot, of, a lot of students, when I talk to them now, they're starting to get confused because they're like, "Why are you, like, why are you going online? Why are you putting stuff online? Like education, like distance education." I have so many people that look at your YouTube videos. There was a therapist that worked at the chiropractor for like a millisecond, and she took your type course in Austin because she found you on YouTube. Yep. Yeah. And so I told her, "Oh my God, like, yes, I know who that is." Yeah. The thing is, they don't understand that I have to have so many students in a room to make it profitable. But when I put it online, very similar to the way that you purchased retail, it's like I made it available. It was quick, it was easy. It's just amplifying connection. It's not really about the platform. It's not whether it's Twitter, or Snapchat, Instagram. Um, <clears throat> you're just using these communication tools to continually reach out to your client base, target base, target market, and provide them value. Yeah, well somebody asked if I was Thai, and I'm like, no, I'm Scott Irish. Uh, I don't sun, I don't tan, I burn. Uh, I've been known to drink. Um, yeah, I started my, my core background, like I started as a massage therapist a couple years in, started doing Thai massage, and that was my core practice, like the bulk of the time I've worked, but it started to branch outside of Thai theory into like pain science and some other stuff, like I was mixing and matching things that confused even people in the Thai massage community, so I just put it together under a new name, I call it a reboot, but the sessions are three hours long, they're best for people on chronic pain, that's kind of more target market, kind of bread and butter. They don't understand the physics of like mat work. Mm -hmm. So what I tell people is it very much feels like I'm in an entire industry full of boxers and they have a jab and an uppercut. Okay. And I'm like, come swing at me and I dodge a punch, put them in a chokehold, wrap my legs around them, it's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you're on a mat now, you can't fight, it's over. That's what I teach. But the thing is, it's a completely different art in a way. It's like I still need a massage license and whatever, but the thing is, it's like, when you look at my practice, you have to understand that what I'm doing basically, in a weird way, makes 99% of the industry feel ostracized because I'm a massage therapist who doesn't have a table in his studio. Right, so it's like... Why are you laughing? Because this is going to be hysterical. Oh, no, I do, I'll do some headache relief, baby, but it ain't going to look like everybody else's, I can guarantee it.
this is massage. The clients want massage. What is this crazy, you know, stuff you're doing? So that's why I had to break like, off on my awesome. own. Awesome, that's what I, it well, is. Well, I, I just had to break off on my own. <laughs> but even the therapists like in Austin, they're like, no, there's no way. You can't do that. And I'm like, I can't do what? Wow. They're like, dude, you can't do three hour. I'm like, go look at my yeah. Yelp profile. My Yelp profile says otherwise, and so does my bank account. Oh, it's like, because they'll say like, you know, the market's saturated in Austin. There's massage school, the market's saturated. I'm like, not for reboot, it isn't. No, that's cool. Yeah. You guys have a good yeah. night. It was good chatting with you guys. Nice we'll see you, you soon. Yeah. We'll see each other again. Definitely. Soon.